Hello everybody! It's been quite a while since my last video, but I'm all set to make new videos for you. The first one is an unboxing and some um, a really great idea that you might like to um, adopt. Um, and especially now with the Christmas break coming up, it would be something you could invest some time in. So, I'm going to shove this aside. And I first want to show you this box by um, Mint Princess. She sent me a journal to review um, that I could use for a bullet journal or, um, well, I have some ideas about what to do with it. So um, it came in a really nice box and very well um, packed with a nice thank you letter um, for the um, journal and a little present and of course mint colored um, little foam thingies <laughs> to protect the journal well and um, I'm going to show you the journal it's nice and big which is what I like because um, A5 size is often a little bit small for my liking um, I don't like writing very small and I also like having a lot of um, space on the pages. So I'll zoom in a little bit and make a little more light here. <laughs> um, so um, she offers um, journals that you can choose a cover for and you can choose the spiral color and you can even choose the paper. And um, what I chose was craft craft paper color um, because recently on Instagram I think I saw these photos coming by from people working with dry media um, that were working on craft uh, craft paper colored paper and that looked really really cool so what I want to do is I'm not sure if I'm gonna turn this into a bullet journal which it could be used for because it's got this dotted paper so it's perfect for a bullet journal and um, the spiral works really really well and I'll show you because she put she inserted some other color papers for me to um, to show you guys this is white this is a yellow color um, a light blue a light mint color a light a lilac color pink light green and another blue a little bit darker than the other one and um, you know you can choose whatever color you like in uh, in the book like this but I chose craft color paper because it is a color I wouldn't choose very uh, easily because I don't really know what to do um, with it yet but all these photos of people working in it with crayons and um, pencil um, made me feel really anxious to give that a try so um, I might use this as a journal slash sketchbook um, I never show those online but I do have them uh, my journals very often turn into sketchbook and vice versa uh, because this is where I write down everything that's on my mind um, art ideas a little doodles when I'm on the phone and um, you know some uh, topic based journaling like making lists of things to do making lists of ideas making a project brainstorm things like that and um, that might start happening in this journal I think it will the other option that I have is to make this my night book. So not a journal, but more like um, a nocturnal. <laughs> um, because I always have a book like this, spiral bound, right next to my bed. My budgies want to speak along. I'm sorry. If they start making a lot of noise, I will try to make them quiet by putting a cover over their cage. <laughs> but I'm going to give them a little while and see if it gets any better. So this might also become a nocturnal diary um, that I have um, right next to my bed to write ideas in and stuff. So I'm looking forward to using it. The feel of the book is really good. Um, in the front of the book is a 
a ruler that I think you can yeah you can take that out so if you need a ruler or if you need to tear something with a straight edge you can use this one so that's really um, luxurious as well and um, well if I have a thing or two in this journal I will share the experience of the paper with you the paper feels nice and thick and sturdy so um, you know when you have moleskin it's really thin paper and so I'm really curious how it will hold with many uh, media and pens like uh, fountain pen and um, markers but um, I'll get back to you about this book um, later on right so that was the mint princess journal um, by the way before I forget mint princess is on Etsy and on Instagram mint princess so um, you can find her journals there and well if you need something you can order from her right there um, right then the next thing I want to show you is this Ta -da! so what is that right as you can see this is a box of Sennelier oil pastels then this is Windsor & Newton oil bars and this is a box of Windsor & Newton artisan and that is water mixable oil, mixable oil color the reason I'm showing you this is not specifically for um, the materials themselves but um, I had an itch to clean out my studio because I had so many um, art supplies that I was not using and that were not my thing um, like the brusho um, I didn't use the brusho I didn't like the brusho I have another kind of crystal pigments that I like better so um, they were here doing nothing the same applied to my Copic markers and some water-based markers that I just hardly use so the only ones I still have left is um, Ecolina markers by Talons and um, the rest I gave away so these are all the product of an art supply trade that I did with a Facebook art friend of mine, um, somebody who is also my student. Um, I simply put an ad on Facebook saying, hey, I've got so many art supplies that I'm not doing anything with. Does anybody want to trade? Because I was looking for, for oil pastels. And Claudine, she came forth and she said, well, Mandy, I don't have the exact oil pastels you're looking for, which were the Caran d'Ache Neo Pastel, but she says, I do have a box of Sennelier oil pastels, and they're, they're all brand spanking new, and they really are. So, um, well, I was really, really thrilled, and um, I filled um, a package of art supplies for her that would match the, the value of this box so you know that you can both trade um, value without having to lose too much or anything at all um, so then she also had the oil bar she wasn't doing anything with and the thing is I have never worked with oil uh, but I have worked with oil paint before but never with these oil bars so I'm really really curious because um, I'll show you something in a minute that um, explains the reason why I wanted these and why I'm also happy with these and then well the first trade was this and then I still had something left and then she said well I have this um, water mixable oil colors that I don't work with anymore can do you want to share because in that case we can you know share our stuff and I've worked with these already in the past and I love them very very much so it's what we did we made another trade and um, well I think it, it both it made us both very happy to be able to work with new art supplies without having to spend a horrific amount of money because all in all this is a couple of hundreds of euros and she's got the same thing at her house and you know we did it with you know a closed purse there's nothing wrong with buying art supplies but the moment you have stuff in your studio that you're not using it will become a burden and it will it will um, stop creative energy from, from flowing so um, that's why I decided to get rid of the stuff it wasn't using anymore um, 
So if you have a good art friend, then um, this really is something worth doing if you can, you know, if you can relate to each other and if you're both willing to meet each other's, the value of your stuff or if you're both willing to give and take a little bit here and there, um, then it's just fantastic because the other supplies I would never have used, they would have gone bad and I would have always felt guilty when I saw them and, you know, they're gone now and instead there is wonderful new supplies I can work with. So, um... In the coming time, I will, I'm going to send out a newsletter shortly about, you know, what's in store for 2018. The first thing I can say is that I have picked up um, reviewing. I have been quiet for quite a bit. There was a lot going on. There were a lot of decisions to make. Um, I have done that now and um, I'm ready for new reviews and I've got quite a bit coming up to review so I'm going to be quite busy um, making videos for you. Um, but the other thing is a project I'm going to do for myself. Um, and you know I might make it into art that I'm going to publish, I don't know. But for now I'm working on a project that's going to be simply for myself. Um, I don't know if you know Susan Seddon Belay. Hold on, I'll grab a book that I can show you her work in. So, this is a book on Susan Seddon Boulay's artwork, a, a retrospective by Michael Babcock. And this is an absolutely wonderful art book. It is costly, but it is definitely worth it if you like her work. The reason I bought it is for two things, is her art in the first place, but I wanted to find out how did she paint these. I used to believe this were oil paints, but no, they are actually oil pastel paints, paintings. So um, you can see by all the sticky notes in this book that I took some notes um, about the technique that she worked with. And um, I started testing working with oil pastels myself. So I'm just going to show you a couple of pages random. You know, there's a lot about her life and she was an interesting woman. So it's an interesting read, but there is also a lot um, of her artwork, if not everything or nearly everything. So it's a beautiful, beautiful book. And I've known Susan Sennabelle's work since, I think, 1990 that I encountered it for the first time. And it grabbed me. She works with archetypes. She works with a lot of symbolism and a lot of nature elements. And it's just gorgeous. Her work tells stories. And it's the intricacy and the detail in the work. And I was incredibly surprised to find that a lot of her work... I mean, when you look at the detail in her work, you would think her work was meters big, you know? But no, she was just very good at working detailed with oil pastel. Well, anybody who's ever worked with oil pastel knows that detail is not exactly um, the way to go. So, um, usually oil pastels are used for quite coarse... Um, uh, images. So what I did is I started to dig into this book, into I have um, a whole folder full of interviews with her, um, information about her and about her techniques and all of that information I put into you know a long note, a thick notebook and then I started to work with her technique. And the thing is you know um, She's worked on this size a lot and, um, you know, this was the very first one I did, this was the second one I did and this is the third one I did and um, I keep asking myself how did she do it? Um, and I'm only going to find out if I start practicing more. And what I know, what I have learned about oil pastels that was not in the books because there is no step-by-step -step guideline um, to ha to the technique of Susan Seddon Um If anything, I'll have to find that one out myself. There are people online who claim to know how she did it, but so far, none of the articles written about her by bloggers are, are correct. 
or they are correct in only one of two uh, steps, but just not the whole way. There is a Susan Seddon Boulay tutorial online that's just completely not correct. Um, and that's okay. I mean, it's still nice work. It's still nice to do. And it's still inspired by her work, but it's not the way she worked. So I'm sort of trying to reconstruct how she did it. And also, of course, I'm going to try and integrate my own illustrative style into her technique to see what it does to my style. And also because what I love about oil pastel is that it is such a physical art medium. You have to work with your hands and it's like sculpting. You have to really get in there. You have to drive your soul into the work. I mean, you, you'll get blisters if you, if you paint a lot. And there is a lot of layering you need to do. So it's like, it's, it's like if you want to tell a story about the core of an onion, you will have to layer the onion layer by layer to make it big and eventually look like an onion but all the layers will be underneath waiting to be to be used for detailing waiting to to be exposed or not you know and it's 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 a game of color and texture and um and the theme you're working with so these are i i had a fourth painting that was actually the best but i sent that one off to uh, an internet friend of mine as a thank you gift for a gift she sent me. Um, and these are the paintings that I have left in the technique. I did them last year, so it's already been a year. But this is one of the projects that's been lying in my studio and that I never finished. Um, or, well, it's some, you know, these are finished, but I want to work more and more towards creating artwork um, in this style. And just, it's just for the fun of it, you know. I studied Rebecca Dautremer's work for quite a while uh, until I, I know now how she does it and she is just incredibly skilled. There is no, no secret um, words to make us make the work that she makes. She's just so good. Um, and the same will apply to Susan Sanabale's work, but I really, really want to know how she does it and see if I can, you know, make that style my own. and. Um, I'm still looking for a way of making fine art to uh, for exhibits. I am doing mixed media, I'm doing watercolor and mixed media, but I'm sort of looking to a more painterly style um, that fits my style and this could be it. But you know, I won't be sure until I've tried it. So this is a little project for me. So I've been collecting oil pastels over the last few months. And um, it's kind of funny because the moment you start, the moment you find out how one of your favorite artists makes their art, you want to buy the supplies they have because you think that once you have the supplies they had, you will be able to do the same, which is of course a little bit naive, but um, well, one can sure try, right? Um, and Susan Sedembele also looked for which um, oil pastel crayons were the best. Well, these are the most expensive. And let me just rummage in this drawer for you. It was kind of a surprise because I thought she was going to like these best of all because every artist screams their lungs out about these oil pastels, which are wonderful. They are said to be like lipstick. Um, they are. You can really rub them in beautifully, evenly, smoothly, gently, and they don't give you blisters. There are a lot of products that do. I'll tell you all about that, but this is wonderful. But they are incredibly expensive, um, especially when you consider that one crayon does not take you very far when you want to apply it over um, a, a rather big area. So I was kind of shocked by how quickly um, you eat your crayon, so to speak. But Susan Sedembule's favorites, according to the literature that I've been able to find, are Panda by Talent, which is school quality, or well, which is just fine quality oil pastels, and they really are fine quality. These are Dutch, these are cheap. Um, you can buy them um, 
I think in America as well, I've seen them, she bought them in America, she got them at least, and she liked them most of all. These were her favorites, which is kind of, which was surprising for me to find out because this has got a huge um, choice of colors and this one I think only 24, I believe if I remember correctly, but then again when you layer you don't need more colors because you will... Um, mix the colors on the surface you're working on. So, well, this is the reason why I'm very, very thrilled to have been able to um, swap my art supplies with Claudine, which is really wonderful. Um, if you want to swap your art supplies, then beware um, of shipping cost. Um, it wouldn't be very wise to swap over the Atlantic um, because it, it's just not affordable to do that. Um, but it would be great if you could find someone um, rather locally or next, almost locally to trade your art supplies with and you know I can say it just feels a ton lighter to not ever have to see the stuff again that I don't work with but that I once bought in the flare of the moment thinking I would use them and I'm just not you know your regular marker girl so um, I'm more the pastel kind of girl so well that was it so we did the unboxing and I showed you my trade and I showed you a little about my um, oil pastel plants and well that's the first video then of uh, a whole new series and I'm not going to promise you when the next video is going to be because, you know, Christmas is coming up. Um, so in the next two weeks, I'm not expecting to be able to do much, if anything at all. My family is going to be home for the next two weeks and um, I want to spend a good time with them. Uh, but you never know when my itch comes up and um, I'll be back really soon and at least for January I have quite a few videos planned. So. I want to wish you guys all a very, very Merry Christmas and um, a lovely New Year's Eve and um, I wish you all a lot of warmth and light and inspiration for um, the upcoming days and 2018. So thank you very much for watching and um, check out uh, Mint Princess and um, I'm looking forward to seeing you again in January. So thank you for watching. Bye.